Oh, well. Oh, dear. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Would you, you sit down? mind if I... No, yeah. no. I'll put it up for a bit, if you don't yeah. mind. I'm a sick man. Have you been walking Looks like far? It. Uh, no, not very far. Uh, I saw the public house and uh, came to it like a pigeon coming back home. <laughs> when, do they, when do they open? In ten minutes, I think. That's been nice so we can wait out here. Would you like some coffee or something just now? Or are you really keen on the beer? Uh, why? Can you provide it? Are you...? Yes, we can do. Yes, we have the landlord, sir. The landlord and landlady? Mm. Yeah. I'm in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> You're surely not from this part of the world. You're not from Swaledale? No, we've just come up here. We've only been here about three weeks. I'm from Oxfordshire. And? I come from Scotland originally, yes. but we've been living just outside of Oxford. Yes. And uh, have you seen much of the Dale? No, not <laughs> in time. Just been too in. busy. I don't think we'll see anything till the winter. Yeah, uh, when it's very nice, isn't it? Mm, it's <laughs> beautiful. What are, you, what are you doing with a broken leg and all? How are you getting around? Uh, well... It's a long story. In short, the television people are helping me to pay my mortgage by asking me to write some songs uh, in and about Swaledale. Uh, and I broke the leg. They said, never mind, carry on, Thackeray. So I'm going to carry on. <laughs> oh, you're Jake Thackeray. Uh, sometimes, more or less. <laughs> We've got one scratch record of yours. It's very good, though. You and yeah, me, Auntie. Scratch. Scratch it <laughs> You and me, Auntie Lily. I'm, I'm waiting. For a, but how are you a going lift. Around? There's my lift oh, over there. Oh, wonderful! So I'll go and get it, and I think I shall be um, seeing you uh, in your public house. Very lovely. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have bye -bye. a lovely trip. I will. Here we go. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Shaw. Hello, there. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello. Could you give me a push in? Yes, I do. Are you strong? <laughs> yes. Right. Brush your knees. <laughs> oh! Beautiful, Lydia. Thank you, Elizabeth. All right. Are you coming aboard? Yeah. Can you get in there, Lush? We think we could just put them down here. Are you all set? Yeah. Up so, here. off we go. Come on, Lush. Bye bye. <laughs> It was a fine bad boy, one of the North Country kind, with a bright blue truck going clickety clack, a Billy rattling behind his dancing little haunches. She cried, oh how she cried, leaning her head against the window pane, waiting. Day after day, watching for a glimpse of him slowly climbing up the lane between the stony walls that always lay between them. It was a fine bay pony, one of the North Country kind. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? Mr. Jake Thackeray. Pleased to meet you. I'm pleased to meet Happy. you, sir. 
It's a nice day for this, anyhow. Thank you. Shall we go and have a, a sit down, do you think? Oh. Right, shall Great. I go in the middle there? Please. Now, I mustn't get a swing on this, otherwise I've had it. <laughs> oh. A lead miner. Yes. Some of these mines had, you were saying, some of these mines had funny names. names. Yes, they have names, you know. Uh, well, ask John Tom, he'll tell you the names Where? of them. The names of these mines, I've oh. seen some on the map, you know. Oh, Gilear. Well, the first you come at, as you go up Gunnarshide, Gilear, Sir Francis. Sir Francis? Yeah. The next one you come at is uh, Lille. It's up in the hill side. Yeah. yeah. Then you go a bit further up, you come to Bunting. Next, Priscilla. Then you come to Green Gill, and then to Blakewaite. How far off here is Blakewaite? Oh, three mile and a half. And you wouldn't catch a bus, would you? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, well, no we had to catch a horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've just been going round on a pony and trap. Uh, pony and trap? Pony and trap. Did you have them up here, pony yeah. and traps? Oh, there were nothing else but ponies and traps. Yeah. Ponies and carts. Yeah. Yeah. How long would it take to get from here to Richmond? Richmond? You know. Well, they used to set off here about six o'clock in the morning, and it was many a time burn near six o'clock at night when they got back. They used to take a load of lead ore down yeah. and bring a load of coal back or meal or whatever it is. Yes, that's whatever right. Whatever there was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> now then, uh, I'll tell you what I've heard about. Um, they play a game up here, so I've been told, that they play in South Yorkshire. Nerd and spell. And yes. Mr. Peacock here has got some... I've got a trap here, and I've oh, got what they call the striker and the ball. Now, I'll just show you what I know about it, although the only person ever I saw play it was my father. Yes. And that's a long, long time ago. Have you seen this played, haven't you? Me? Yeah. Ah, uh, many times. Now, I'm going to strike the spring, the ball will fly in the air, and then if I'm a good shot, I should hit it. But I'm not too good a shot. So I'll we'll see just that. see. Is it right, all this? Yes. Yeah. What is it saying? Ooh. Yeah. What's that foot? Ah. I'm frightened if I, you know. It's easy, is that? I reckon it's well, easy. Would you like a shot? Uh, eh? Would you like a shot? Uh, set it up. Set it up, and I'll grip my teeth. And I'll show you what a Yorkshireman can do. Good. <laughs> All right, now. Have you got any big windows? Come back onto the flag. Yeah. You don't I mind to windows. sort of life, isn't it? Best job in the world. What about winter time? It's all right now, you know. Sunshine. Oh! Place, but... I've, I've walked from down there, up here, and uh, when it's a blizzard, it's, uh, uh, you get sort of arctic conditions, you know. I've been snow, ice over here. I've pulled shape out of that valley over there when they've been frozen to the ground. In fact, I've had to pull them out and leave the tails. Oh, well. Get 
like this is the best season we've had for 13 years. He said there's been no sudden severe check in yes. conditions this last winter, spring, and uh, wool fleeces are, are whole. A lot better condition is the wool. And, uh, now the wool market is holding its own against man made and synthetic fibres. In fact, this year it has risen a little bit. How do they know? I mean, it's a silly question, you know. But how, how do they know who you're calling? All your whistles are, are different, but you know. Well, I, I, yes, I have a different whistle for for each way for, for each, dog. Uh, each dog to go and, and for each dog, and uh, I, sh I showed the names before a whistle. Uh, it takes them a while to learn to mm. run two or three at the same time. How, how many sheep have you got altogether? Oh, just over a thousand. A thousand. Aye. Is that a lot for a for a sheep farmer up here? Uh, yes, it's a uh, large hill shape farm, 11,000. And how many fellas do you work with? Oh, I just have myself, apart from a little bit of casual labour. The casual labour is the dogs, is it? <laughs> the dogs, the bitches, and the bird. <laughs> Anybody yeah. in the village wants a day's work. But, you know, uh, I, for a working man to be on a bloody moor like this, day in, day out, well, not day and day out, but for a lot of the year. Do you not get, I don't know, I was going to say lonely, or don't you feel cut off, and do you not want to see people a bit more? No, I, I prefer working on my own, but uh, time and time I do. I do get down to see people, I have a week's holiday year. Sometimes I have a look into, into London. And, have a look uh, into London? Aye. And... Uh, Look at a few man-made synthetic men. country children, you know, they're quite without guile. They're perfectly natural. Mrs. Guy, uh, I used to be a teacher, and we used to have 35, 40 in a class. You've only got 10. Do they get into any mischief? There's well? no trouble here at all. They, yeah. We never have any bother with discipline. I never raise my voice. They, yeah. We're all one big family. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is, of course, it's different from uh, a town school in that everybody 
has to work, uh, we don't carry passengers. And we have one word in this school we're not allowed to say, and that is can't. This sounds a bit ideal. Uh, is it's ideal up to a point. Uh, because there are no two the same age, they're not stretched as far as, uh, as they could be. They could have a little bit more competition were there's yes. someone their own age working and doing slightly better than them, then it would be their John and uh, yes. they would do yeah. better. Yeah. What is this lot going to be like in... What's the school going to be like in five, ten years? Is it still going to be here? Oh, well, that's it. That's a, there's a lot of controversy in the Dale over that at the moment. But, you know, once the school closed, the village loses something. You don't see them playing about and so on. It'll be a pity if it does close, but, uh, well, there are only 11 children. Thank you very much for the lift, Mr. Oh, Carpenter. not at all. I'm very sorry we couldn't get that um, pony and trap up here. Oh, well, no. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll have a look at John's house. Would you like to go up there? Great, yes. Off we go. Hello, Mr. John. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, I brought Jake Thackeray up to see you. Look, can, um, I, can I type you on a look now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Get it shot. <laughs> That's a fox. Yeah. Oops, sir. You're a young buck, uh, taking animals in the countryside and the dale seriously. No. Oh, what, yes. what, what does the dale mean to you? What, what would you want best out of it in the next 10, 20 years? Well, it's just what do you want out of life? And, and you've just got to sort of do an equation and, and find out what you want, and then you've got to set your sights and, and, and go from there. And, um, it's just a very pleasant place to live in with pleasant people. Uh, yeah, but are there going to be many more people doing the same things as you? You've got some kind of active life in the daily. Oh, yes, and it's fascinating, and it, it interests me tremendously. But um, you were sort of heading towards talking about um, the depopulation. Uh, and yes. it's, it, I mean, I've seen a lot of friends leave. You know, yeah. a tremendous lot of friends leave. Yeah. Um, the thing is that it, it's something peculiar to rural areas. Yeah. Um, oh, it's well, it's not, John, that's not strictly true, surely. I mean, something peculiar to rural areas, but it's worse in this area than it is in most. I mean, the, the percentage of population here over, say, 70 years of age is very, very high compared to any area. Oh, around that's about because here. it's such a lovely place to live for a, a person with private means. Now, you see, Mr. MacArthur, to go any further, to, to have an influx of people, you disrupt the farming community for a start. And, and bear in mind, that it's unfortunate that mechanisation has gone and turned the way it's done. Ah, uh, but I don't think you farmers' see, uh, sons make farmers. I, you know, I don't. I don't no, nobody trade. wants to disrupt anybody. You see, this is the whole point of the matter. Nobody wants to disrupt anybody. What we w want, actually, is, I would say, is apart from boosting tourism, is is, is this cottage type of industries which they have in the Highlands of Scotland, they have in Switzerland, they have them all over in rural areas like this where people can get employment. It's all happened before. It's, it's happened in the Highlands and it's happened here. We've oh, had mass exodus we're, to we're, America. We're, you know? we're, we're about and, and can we get down to cases? What about, a, what about a couple of good fish shops? What about a putting green? What about uh, two or three good caravan sites? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, this is the sort of thing. You see, is it? But you, you, yeah. Is it the sort of thing? You see, Mr. MacArthur's speaking from a hotelier's point of view, literally. No. You, you are rather. Because, you see, man makes his own way in the world. And, you see, you'll try to dictate to the people of this valley what they should do, but you can't. Excuse me, could I chip in there? Yeah. You make your own way in the world in a cave if you want to live in a cave, you see. I mean, somebody, <laughs> might, somebody might come along, you see, with a big shovel and dig up holes and get potash. Now, the people do make their own way in the world, but they will be dictated to with more than words with big shovels. Now, you know, how are you going to... You want to solve? There is a problem here, isn't there? Oh, yes. It oh, yeah. oh, and it's oh, very, very, it's very you don't real. Like, you don't like a, a good fish and chip shop and a putting green. I don't know whether I do. <laughs> what are you going to provide? What, what's going to make people grow and be happy and prosperous and vigorous? Or... Yes, but couldn't we say that I'm growing and happy and prosperous and vigorous now? 
Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, so that's one down. How many to go? Ah, well, that, that, that is the crux of the matter, isn't it? Um... It's a monk. It isn't a monk. Good afternoon. How, How are do? you? How do you do? Welcome to Richmond Castle and its 900 celebrations. Can we take you on a guided tour around the castle? Can I put my hand up your frock? Don't you be <laughs> like that. You'll be surprised <laughs> no, what you me. might find up there. W what's, uh, what is all this? Well, this is my costume. I'm the castle jongler or entertainment man. Yeah? This year we're running special celebrations for the 900th anniversary of this wonderful old castle. Now, today we're running tours round the castle by people like myself, all volunteers in costume. So can we have the pleasure of showing you around? Uh, yes, certainly, yes, if there are more like you. There are you. many, many more, <laughs> even, some more, even some more beautiful than me. Let's go off down this way. Yeah. Would you mind uh, if I save the guard at tour for a bit and got me leg up? Not at all. Let's sit down here on this yes. old well. It's a well, is it? It's a well. It's don't fall down, whatever you do. Sit down. Up on the old well. Have a cigarette. Put your hat on. Put me hat on. Put me hat on. Do monk smoke? Uh, well, we're not supposed to in costume, but we'll chant it this time. There's lots of uh, beautiful ladies around here in, in very nice costume, you know. <laughs> well, Richmond, the Richmond Castle celebrations are strictly entertainment by the people of Richmond, for the people of Richmond. The whole of the celebrations is manned by volunteers who do this in their spare time. All the money we raise during the celebrations, we're going to give away to charity when we've finished. Listen, um, I've been further up the top of the dale from Kell down to Reith. What should they do up there? Could you add, you know? <laughs> well, basically, the, the one thing... They have thing, got a problem, haven't they? they? They have got a problem up there. They are rather... Thinner, thinner on the ground physically than we are here. But basically they should try to keep their own places as natural as possible and get out information. This is what people are looking for. They can't find out about the beauty spots that there are in the Dale. Yeah. Provide an information service to tell the people about these in just the same way as my guides are doing here. <laughs> Long down, down through your stony faced meadows, your scowling hills, your crouching towns. Go, little swell, and I'll follow. The taciturn fell farmers patiently still. Walking their hillsides, the poor folks cheap stare as they go. The thin of old women go day after day, turning their head down by the river where white tails go trotting, by Muka, by Thwaite, by Hilo, by Potatot, go little swale, go headlong down. Down through your stony faced meadow, your scowling hills, your crouching towns, go to swell and fly for Scowling. 